Hello, and welcome once again to Family Historian. My name is Stephen Conti. Tonight we're going to learn about the records of the blue and the gray, the war between the states, the Civil War. And joining me on tonight's show for the umpteenth time is my good friend Tom Riley. Tom is the town historian for Bloomingdale, New Jersey. He is the author of seven books and one on the way, and he is the great-great-grandson of a Civil War soldier. And on tonight's show, Tom is going to teach us how we can find our Civil War ancestor. And now let's welcome Tom Riley. Tom, welcome back. Happy to be here. Great. Tom, before we get into the how-to of finding our Civil War ancestor, give our viewers an idea of why we had the Civil War, the origins of the war between the states. Well, the main reason is the secession of the southern states. They decided they didn't want to belong to a country with an a anti-slavery president like Abraham Lincoln. And South Carolina decided that they would secede. Mm -hmm. And then they were followed by seven other states and then four more. Now, this was a threat to their economy in the South because slavery built those plantations. I mean, they lived like royalty down there. Is that correct? And slavery is the issue that separated the North and the South. Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. course, being a, an agricultural, you know, mostly based on cotton and tobacco in the South. Right. You know, slavery was a big part of their economy. It was the reason they were able to have those big plantations. Right. Whereas the North was more industrialized. And if people had slaves in the North, they might just have one or two, not the numbers that they had in the South. Right. Now, you mentioned to me that there were three kinds of states. Can you tell our viewers what those are and please define them for us? Of course, the Southern states, the Confederacy, were the Southern states. Mm -hmm. In between, you had the border states. Now, the border states were Maryland, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Missouri. Okay. Now, they were slave states. Slavery was legal in those states. Right. But they did not secede. Okay. So that's why we call them the border states, because they're right on the border between the North and the South. Right. And then, of course, the North was the, the states that it didn't want slavery. Right. They had the abolitionist movement, I see. Where abolitionists were very strong in the North. Right. Now, we are in New Jersey, which is a very unique area, and New Jersey had a kind of name, and you told me what that name was. Well, because the Mason-Dixon line, which is the traditional border between the North and the South, Right. if you extend that to the East, the southern part of New Jersey is actually below the Mason-Dixon line. And we do have a map showing that. It goes right into Cape May County, Cumberland County. And there was a lot of Southern sympathy in New Jersey. Yes. We had a lot of business with them. Um, the Jersey Shore was a major center for Southerners to come on vacation. Right. And um, some, some historians actually consider New Jersey the northernmost Southern state. The northernmost southern state. Very, very unique, I see. Uh, but that is really something because there are still people in Cape May County who I think were southern sympathizers. New Jersey had one regiment that actually fought in the Confederate Army. Really? Yep. Isn't that something? Now, the first battle that we had, and you can give us the date, uh, it was a Union garrison off the coast of South Carolina. Fort Sumter. All right. And when did that happen? That was attacked by? the, Actually, the South Carolina militia, right. which will become the part of the Confederate Army. Yeah. They attacked Fort Sumter, which was a northern fort, mm -hmm. guarding the, the harbor of Charleston, South Carolina, April 12th. 1861. And that signaled the beginning of the Civil War. They are the first shots fired of the Civil War. All right. And you told me that in those early days of the Civil War, the South was winning. A lot of the major battles, like Manassas and, you know, it's called Bull Run and a number of the other battles, the South actually was victorious. Why, why is that? Do you know why? Or Well, um, 
you grow up in the South at that time, you grew up with a rifle in your hand. Mm -hmm. you know, they, were, they were rural people. They, they were used to hunting and using weapons. Right. Uh, a lot of the Northern Army was city people. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of them were immigrants. You know, they recruited right off the, the immigrant boats. Right. And they weren't that familiar with guns and being in the military. The big thing that the South had was better generals. Mm -hmm. A lot of the generals in the Union, in the American Army before the Civil War, they were Southerners. And when the South seceded, they went with the South. Like Robert E. Lee. Like Robert E. Lee. Okay. He and was many the, others. And he was the Southern one. That's the one that we all know. Correct. Right? Now, there was a turning point in the Civil War. Gettysburg, and you all know about Gettysburg. I have been there many, many times. Where Great they trip. do reenactments, which is kind of spooky. Uh, and there's a, an enormous battlefield there. When did that battle take place at Gettysburg? So that was July 1st to the 3rd, 1863. And the reason that's the turning point, mm -hmm. and it's also the biggest battle, Yes. Uh, the reason it's the turning point is because that was an invasion of the South into the North, mm -hmm. you know, into Pennsylvania. Right, right. And three-day battle, big battle, a lot of deaths. And when the South lost, unfortunately, they couldn't carry on an offensive war again. You know, after that, it was all defensive. You know, they had to go on the defensive because of that terrible loss. Right. Now, General Grant, I always thought he was involved with that battle. Not Gettysburg. Who, who, no. was, who was the general at Gen that time? General Meade was the commander at Gettysburg for the North. Uh, unfortunately, he, he, that's about the only major battle that he was involved in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after the, the Gettysburg, he fall from, fell from favor. So He was fired. Uh, he was, yes. They, they complained that he didn't follow up. If he had followed up mm -hmm. after the battle and followed Lee back into Maryland, into Virginia, right. you know, and tried to put an end to the Confederate Army, that the war could have ended right then. Right. And then, of course, we had the Emancipation Proclamation, which I think was on January 1, 1863. Okay, but the war still continued, though. Oh, yeah. That was after the Battle of Antietam. Mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln felt he needed a successful battle right. in order to come out with the proclamation. And the whole idea was to deny the South their slaves. And it actually says that it's only the slaves in the South, the seceding states, that are freed. Mm -hmm. So the slaves in those border states, you know, they weren't affected by the Emancipation Proclamation. Just the ones in the... the seceding states. I see. Okay. Now, the ending date. Appomattox, and when that was the end of the war, where Lee surrenders to Grant, and that date is April 9th, 1865. April 9, 1865. So the war was almost exactly four years, started in April, ended in April. And they shook hands. They did. We hope they did. <laughs> they did. They These did. Pictures, I mean, there's drawings of that. Very, very good. Now, Let's get to the sources. We gave you the history of the Civil War within, I think, four minutes or so. Uh, the sources are abundant, and I hope we can fit all of them in, and my fine learned guest, Tom Riley, is going to explain them. Um, there, there are two wonderful sources in book form, but you can get them online as well. And can you tell us what these sources are and what they will tell the New Jersey descendant, but they do have counterparts in, in other, other states. states. Yes. And what are these sources? Uh, the source for, for years, the, and the main source, mm -hmm. was a, a book by William Stryker uh, that listed all of the New Jersey veterans and the battles and the regiments that they were in. So Stryker's book on the veterans of the Civil War is, is a main one. And this has been indexed. Yes, and it is online. It's online. Yep. Okay, so you, if you know your ancestor's name, you just type it in there. And, Correct. And what information will it give you? Um, well, a key to using Stryker and all of these sources mm -hmm. is knowing the regiment. A lot of the information is categorized by regiment. I see. So if you knew your, your ancestor's regiment, right. that would help. You'd be surprised how much you can find by just Googling the veteran's name mm -hmm. with his dates and Civil War. 
and a lot of times it'll come up, it'll refer to Stryker or any other books that he's in. Right. And a lot of times they'll give you the regiment that he was in just by Googling the name. Right. And then we have another uh, uh, wonderful book, uh, Remember... Remember You Are Jerseyman. <sighs> written by a very good friend of mine who was on my show a few years ago, Joe Bilby and another gentleman, I believe. Correct. And tell us uh, about that book. Okay. Um, this is for book. New Jersey only, yes. right? Okay. And it's about this thick. <laughs> right. And it gives a history, really, of all the regiments. Just about every regiment had a historian. Mm -hmm. Many of those historians wrote their own book. But what he did was he combined all of those stories into one big book. And it, it'll give the rank, it'll give the regiment, it'll give uh, whether they were discharged uh, for being wounded. Um, it'll give usually gives where they were from. Right. So it, it's, it's another really good source. So these books are very good resources, a yes. good starting point. Certainly okay? is, yes. And if you want to narrow it down more, you came upon this book right here, uh, right. Tom. Can you tell our viewers what the name of this book is? The Mutinous Regiment, the 33rd New Jersey in the Civil War. So this is just about the 33rd Regiment. Two of the people I, I uh, researched mm -hmm. were in that regiment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's really based on the regimental historian's work. So many regiments will have individual books like that. And this is just one that we just have here. Just one regiment. Okay, yeah. th that really narrows it down for the research. It gives you a vast amount of knowledge. Now we have a government source. You've all heard about the uh, federal population census. I never knew this until you came along. The 1890, you tell our viewers what, what it's called. It, it was made in 1890 and the full title of it. Well, it's the 1890 veteran schedule of the United States Federal Census. So that's the title, but it's a separate schedule. It's a separate census from the 1890 census. So you have to go specifically to the 1890 veterans schedule. I see, okay. And that gives you a vast amount of information too, rank, uh, if they're an invalid, you know, mm -hmm. what they were stricken with and mm -hmm. their regiment and a lot of information there. Right. And now, it's online. I know you don't have an ancestor on here, but uh, you mentioned a man named Levi. Levi Brown actually is. His wife was a Riley, one of my Oh, I see. Members. So this is an ancestor of yours. By and marriage. He's, and he's listed on here. Right there, yep. Very good. And then you mentioned, now here we go back to the federal population census, the 1910. Correct. And they specify something on that. Can you tell our viewers about that? They have a column that? near the end mm -hmm. if the person was a veteran or not. Right. And what war they were in. So mm -hmm. you'll see Civil War veterans there. You'll see War of 1812 veterans there. Right. So that, that's also a good score. If you're not sure whether your ancestor was a veteran, mm -hmm. the 1910 census will tell you. Very good. Now. Uh, before we go on to more sources that are online, and, and Tom will explain those to you, let's talk about Charles Card. And who was Charles Card? He was my great-great-grandfather. All right, and he was in the... He was in the Civil War. Uh, he was in the 18th Regiment, New Jersey. And he had a short career, which is awesome. Like, we're all looking for heroes. We're all right. looking for... Well, he got hit in the head building a road. Okay. And he was only in for about nine months. Yes. While he was in the hospital, he got scarlet fever. He lost a hearing in one ear. Yeah. And, you know, in these pension uh, applications. And we have, we have a, a, yes. a, a visual of his pension. You know, in these uh, pension records, there's affidavits mm -hmm. by friends and relatives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's one comment by one of his friends that says he, you know, I worked with him cutting peat with a right. square knife. And he went off to war a strong young man and he came home a broken man, unable to earn a day's wage. I see, but he still served though. He oh, still, yeah. And the, the widow did get some kind of a pension. Yeah, yep, yep, he got a pension, an invalid pension, you know, it was more because you were injured. Right. And then the widows, whether you're injured or not, the widows could apply for a widow's pension. And right. there's a lot of good information on those pension applications and they're online. Right. Uh, also, we have some paperwork. Uh, the National Archives. You swear by the National Archives. Excellent, excellent. Because they will send you a whole packet of records, all kinds of records. And a very good friend of mine uh, lent me some of her records of her great, great 
grandpa who was from Connecticut. His name was Orlando Morgan. And we have some copies of the records that were sent to her. I think one is a discharge uh, a paper and some other ones as well. And they sent her a complete packet. And I, I, I guess it, was, it wasn't that much money, I don't think. Well, how much would they charge you about the National Archives? I haven't done it for a long time. It used to be a quarter a page. Right. But I don't know if that's up to date or not now. Right. It might be more now. But we do have some examples of the records of Orlando Morgan. Uh, and there's also a, a casualty discharge paper. Uh, I think he hurt his hand or something like that. But I do want to thank my friend for uh, lending me these wonderful records of her ancestor. If thank you, you, Roseanne. Okay. If you send in requesting, they'll pick. Yeah. Uh, for instance, when I went there like 40 years ago, it, took, it was a two-day trip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they came out with a stack, like you said, about yes. that thick. Yes. And if you are doing this by mail, they'll pick what they think are the most important ones. Yes. But one of my most rewarding experiences researching Civil War mm -hmm. was to go through those actual, you know, the real Civil War records. Right, right. See the battles that he was actually Which in. Which they had sent you, is that correct? Well, I had to go there. I went there. Oh, in I, the old days, but yes. now you can, and, and you, you can, can get do, these online. You can do all your research right from your own home. They'll, they'll list the most important things online. Right. Now, I'm going to, uh, mention these various sources and you can give your critique on each one uh, which I've featured on my show before fold3.com okay now that's a pay site mm -hmm. but it is all just military records so people that have used it that I know they say that's an excellent source and they felt their money was worth it because of the information they found out and of course ancestry.com they have a separate schedule for military records. Mm -hmm. Very easy to use if you're already a member of Ancestry, which is a pay site. Yes. You know, it's very easy to access their records. Right. Uh, newspapers.com. Really, really good source. Um, if you know the date that they, they died, mm -hmm. uh, you can look up their obituaries. And I found some really interesting information, how they would have a military funeral. Right. And uh, if they were a veteran, they qualified for that. Mm -hmm. and they would blow the bugle and really a lot of good information and about you, the obituary. And you showed me the obituary for Charles Card. And what year did he, he, he was born 1841, is that 1841, correct? 1841 and he died in 1926. Oh, all right. Even though he couldn't hear in one ear and you know, he was disabled. Right, and he was a Jersey boy. Oh yeah. Okay, fine. And then we mentioned the National Archives. And what is the G-A-R? The, Grand Army of the Republic. So that's the American Legion or VFW, you know, right. an organization for just Civil War veterans. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they had posts just like the American Legion does. Right. And they have a website, uh, usually by town, like Bloomingdale is the town that, you know, I found my ancestors in. Right, right. And they would usually have a list of information. And unfortunately, eventually, all the veterans passed away. Mm -hmm, so the mm -hmm. GAR went out of, but their sources are good sources too. Right, very good. And then we have something called Find a Grave. Find a Grave, can you tell us about that? Okay, you know, again, it's a website and um, it's listed by cemetery and name. Mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. know the name, you know, you can go on and type it in on the Find a Grave and they'll show you all the people with that name and where they're buried. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You can also search it by going to the cemetery, if you know the cemetery where right, they are. Right, right. The problem, not the problem, but one of the things you have to deal with is, for instance, uh, Levi Brown. Mm -hmm. When I originally reached him, researched him, there were 20 Levi Browns <laughs> that served in the Civil War. Right. So sometimes it takes a little trouble to find out which one is yours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I know that you were very, well, you are the man behind the Manning Avenue Cemetery in Butler, New Jersey. Uh, we did a whole show on that a long time ago. One of the men. And you wrote a book about that. How many Civil War soldiers are buried in that cemetery? Because the cemetery was at its high point in the late 1800s to 1900, right. that's right when a lot of Civil War veterans were dying. Yes. So we have 24 veterans 
buried in the Manning Avenue Cemetery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of information. Just uh, for Civil War. Uh, just Civil War veterans. Right. Just 24 Civil War veterans buried there. And there's a lot of information on the stones. There's three types of stones for the Civil War veterans. Yeah. A lot of times, like Levi Brown, he put mm -hmm. 33rd Regiment right on his own gravestone. So, you know, some of their own Very gravestone. easy for the researcher. Right. And then there were, like in New Jersey, the county was responsible mm -hmm. for if a Civil War veteran didn't have a stone, right. the county would provide him with a stone. And they would hire a uh, contractor yes. to make the stones. And many of the ones in Manning Avenue are all the same. Yes. And then the third type, of course, is the ones that come from the Veterans Administration. Very good. You know, we just ordered one of those for a veteran that didn't have a stone in Manning Avenue. Very good, very good. Now we are going to mention to you the how-to books, and there are dozens of them. Uh, we're just going to mention a few of these, and we'll hold them up. Uh, we have one, well, this tells it all, Tracing Your Civil War Ancestor, a very good how-to book. Another one is called How to Find Your Civil War Ancestor. And uh, here's one that I, I find amusing. I love researching my Civil War ancestor. Uh, another interesting one is finding the Civil War in your family album. If you have an old uh, a photo album, you might find a Civil War, and a friend of mine did that. And they're treasure. When you yes. find a, especially if they have their uniform on. Right. That's right. a treasure. Uh, another one is, what did your Civil War ancestor look like? Uh, so uh, they would give you photos of what these people may have looked like. And the National Archives has many, many hundreds of pictures. Right. Um, here's a funny one. I think this is put out by Ancestry.com. Found your Civil War ancestor? Now what? <laughs> Where do you go from there? And a very good one to really narrow it down. I like this one very much as I think you would. How to find your ancestor's Civil War unit. Yep. So that really narrows it down. And that's important. That's a key. Knowing the regiment is a key to finding your ancestor. Right, right. Uh, before we close, I want to feature one of your uh, wonderful books because it has a lot to do with the Civil War. Can you talk about that book as well? Uh, well this is very unique. Ringwood Manor, which is a state park in New Jersey, they have a really excellent Civil War gun collection. Mm -hmm. And my brother was a docent there, a guide. Right. And when I would visit him, you know, they didn't know that much about the guns that they had there. Mm -hmm. And they're all labeled, and it's a really excellent collection because Abram Hewitt, who owned Ringwood Manor, he was an iron maker, mm -hmm. and he made the barrels for a lot of Civil War guns. Right. And that's why he started this collection. And it's a whole list of a whole lot of many, many, some of them very rare Civil War guns. Right, right. It's one of the only places. They, they have carbines. And these are on display? Uh, well, in the main hall, Yeah. they're on the wall, all the way around mm -hmm. on the wall, so you get a close-up look at them. So you have them. rifles and guns, and then you have something in your own possession. A friend of mine gave me an actual Hall carbine, which, yeah. is, which is in the book. Right. Know, uh, that was used in a Civil War, yes. That's, and the reason they wanted a carbine is mm -hmm. because the cavalry is, uh, had a hard time. You know, you're riding a horse, it's hard yes. to use a muzzle loader. Yes, So yes. they wanted a breech loader that opened like a shotgun where you put the bullet in yes. up at the breech. Yes. So there were many, many different kinds of experimental breech loaders mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the cavalry. And Ringwood Manor has 11 of them, so that's a very nice... Well, uh, you, you may have rifles and guns, but I have with me on the set an original Civil War. I call it a sword, but you call it a... Saber. A saber, okay. And this was lent to me by my good friend, Roseanne. This fell into her family. Don't mess with me. <laughs> okay. What, what can you say about this? this well, you, you, can you see saw this, the date here. Right. Yes. The thing that makes it a saber is the curve. Mm -hmm. And the sabers, of course, were issued to cavalry. Right. And a ceremonial sword for an officer or artillery would be straight. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be curved like that. Yes. But when you look at that, you can tell it's authentic because it has the maker's name 
And on the other side, it has U.S. 1864. And this is a union. Because it says right. U.S. If it was Confederate, it would say it would be worth a lot of money. Yes. But it would say C.A.S. But because it says U.S. and the date. All right. So this north. belonged to a Yankee. Yes, it did. And what, what rank of, of uh, well, this would be an officer's? Uh, no, regular soldier, anybody in the cavalry. The cavalry were the mounted troops, right? Right. So right. the officers and the regular soldiers would have a saber like that. Right. Now, one thing that's interesting is, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of a uh, romantic uh, aspect of war is when two cavalry units would have a saber fight. You yes. know, they'd have a saber yes. charge. Yes. Or charging, you know, with their mm -hmm. sabers. Mm -hmm. But the Civil War put an end to that because at the end of the Civil War, almost all the cavalry units were dis they weren't shooting. I mean, they weren't mm -hmm. fighting saber mm -hmm. to saber anymore. They were dismounting. A lot of them had repeater rifles because it's Civil War ending now. And they were shooting from a, a dismounted position. Right. And, you know, they would shoot down the cavalry before they even got close enough to use their sabers. Right. So this is a value. You would it say is. a lot of value. Yeah. But if this was from, uh, I, I guess, would the South have something comparable oh, to this? Certainly, just like that. And another interesting thing about that, I didn't mention this before, but if you look at the Knicks, mm -hmm. there's Knicks on that. Mm -hmm. And the Knicks say that that was actually used. Oh, my know, word. That was used. The Knicks, that was used in battle. Yeah. What happened to all of the, the, the guns and swords for the, for the South, the rebels? I mean, are they, did we take everything? Well, number one, you had to surrender your arms, right? Mm -hmm. So, but the South was using everything they could get their hands on. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of Southern soldiers brought their own weapons, mm -hmm. you know, hunting guns in the beginning. And, yes. But at the end of the war, it was mostly the Enfield rifle. The Enfield rifle, the South was importing from Britain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just about all the regiments had Enfields. The North, yes. the main weapon was the Springfield. Right. But by the end of the war, almost all the Northern troops were using Springfields and the Southern troops were using, yeah. were using Enfields. Well, this has been a very informative show on Civil War records with my very learned friend, Tom Riley, author, historian, uh, very smart guy. And um, I don't know how we can top this show tonight. I, I don't wanna get too aggressive with this, <laughs> but I do wanna thank you folks uh, for watching. I hope you learned something. There are many sources out there in order to find your Civil War ancestor, as Tom has shown us this evening. And you can do all of it right from the privacy of your own home. You don't have to drive down to the National Archives like we both did many years ago. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for coming on my show. And I want to thank you people out there for watching Family Historian tonight. And remember, we are all descendants of ancient civilizations. Genealogy is your key to the history of your family. And so until next time, this is Stephen Conti wishing you the very best of luck in your research and above all, happy ancestor hunting. Good night.